Once you've determined the transition date for the new lease standard, you'll want to consider the five practical expedients available at transition. Hi, I'm Priya Singleton, Quality Control Officer at Blue & Company. Let's talk about the practical expedients or shortcuts that are available to you as you transition your leases to the new standard. The first three are really a package deal and should be applied together as an all or nothing option. This package of practical expedients to consider a transition basically states that one, you do not have to reevaluate whether existing or expired contracts is or contain leases. Two, you do not have to reevaluate lease classification for expired or existing leases. And three, you do not have to reevaluate the treatment of previously reported initial direct costs for any existing leases. These three relief provisions must be applied consistently together to all your leases meaning you cannot apply the relief on a lease-by-lease -lease basis. In addition, you must disclose that the practical expedient package has been elected. It is important to pause and consider the implications of electing this package for your organization. Say you have a portfolio of leases that were previously classified as operating leases that now meet the definition of a finance lease. This classification may have a favorable impact on your EBITDA because the entire expense from your finance lease, which is the interest and amortization, would be excluded from this measurement. In this case, you may want to reassess classification and thus not elect the practical expedient package. The second expedient is the hindsight practical expedient. When you're determining your lease term or impairment of your existing right of use assets and transition, you may consider the actual outcome of your lease renewals, termination, and purchase options that you previously evaluated up until the effective date. This relief can be elected independently of the practical expedient package, but the key point here is that it must be applied consistently to all of your leases. This is an important point to consider, especially for large lease portfolio holders, as this election could result in a lot of work. The final practical expedient to consider a transition is related to land easements, which is the right to use, access, or cross another entity's land for a specified purpose. Some companies may have had land easements going back several years and may have accounted for them as leases while others accounted for them as intangible assets. This practical expedient allows you to choose to not apply the new lease guidance to land easements that existed before the effective date of the new standard. However, this expedient can only be applied if the easements were not previously accounted for as leases. Also, companies will still be required to evaluate any new or modified lease easements after adoption of the lease standard. Taking these five practical expedients into account should help you smoothly transition to the new lease standard. If you'd like to read more on this topic, please click on the link below to download Blue & Company's ASC 842 Lessee Implementation Guide or click through to watch the next video in this series on accounting policy elections.